So yesterday I prepped my mounds, my two rows that'll be for my potatoes. They're about a foot deep of really broke up dirt. That way the potatoes don't have to work too hard to get big and go down. I then cut my potatoes to prep. I sprouted my own here and just cut off to make sure that some sprouts have potatoes connected to them. We're going to go ahead and some of these have just the barelyest little, but I'm going to go ahead and try them anyway. And we're going to go ahead and make a hole. Just going to put our hand in here. We're going to go about four inches deep down. We do the cut side down. So this side that we've cut, let dry up a little bit. We're going to do that. And then we're going to take some dirt and put it back through. And I'm going to water this through and also um, it's going to rain the next two days so that's going to get some good moisture through there and that'll help break that up. This garden gets an amazing amount of sun, nothing blocking it here or there so uh, this dirt does dry up really easily in between waterings if not but yeah and we just cover our little thing so I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way down. You'll notice I put everything relatively close together throughout this line too, and that's because I use the one foot method in our garden where nothing is more than a foot apart. Um, some things I do really close together, like my carrots and corn, um, and they're as many as four by four in a square foot, and then the things that are bigger, like my potatoes and anything else, I just do one foot apart down the row. And I'm gonna come back this evening or sometime in the next day or two, and I'll get straw or any used hay, like hay that has dropped down from the animals when they eat, and I will put them in the walkways here. Not only will that help hold moisture in, in between waterings and rain, but it will also keep uh, the weeds out of the aisle ways which makes it less weeds within these ways these ways makes less weeds in the rows where you're growing food and just makes it all around easier maintenance can't wait to watch these potatoes grow the grass clippings are really nice All right, so I'll kind of water that in and that will help keep the weeds back and the soil 
damp and we'll water it just so the wind can't blow it around and then I'll do another layer of it just to make sure there's a good thick layer around and as I plant more in the rest of the garden I will do the same thing to that and you can use um, straw or hay I use the extra hay and straw that I rake up out of the animal gardens as long as you're not putting it too close to the plants because it will have um, some poo and everything from the animals in it so you, you want to make sure that you just keep it away from being directly on your plant so that you don't burn your plants out okay our potatoes are doing good the mounds are good haven't gotten a lot of weeds and the the straw walkways have stayed down really good. I have prepared two more rows ready for just direct seed sowing outside. As you can see, I do about three to four foot wide and then I'm just gonna, when I get the straw put down there, I'm gonna have maybe a foot for my pathway in between because I want my garden to be mostly garden. And as long as you can reach into the center of it, then that's all you need to get to from one path and you go on the next path to get to the other half of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start corn at the absolute end back there and I'm gonna do it about a third of the way up. Then I'm gonna have beans and then I'm gonna have carrots and lettuce. I do that because I'm going off of the fact that I get sun coming up from this side and then it sets on this side so instead of putting a whole roll of corn in one of these and having it block out the sun, I'm gonna do a little strip. So I'm gonna do that, prepare it, and then I'll come back and show you after I lay some straw. So here's what these rows look like so far after a couple good rains. Previously, I've always started everything inside and then brought it out, but with that, you have to harden plants um put them out in the wind and everything for a couple hours a day before you bring them out into the garden and if you don't harden them properly then they can come out they get winded or they get really hot if you're not watering them enough when you first put them in whereas a plant that you can start outside from seed that comes up is already going to be hardened as it's coming up and something that I had pointed out before but wanted to explain a little better with these rows, a lot of times I do like how the potato rows is just potatoes all the way down. Sometimes I do that. Just like how the tomatoes are gonna be tomatoes all the way down, but right in front of the tomatoes, about a good not even foot is where I'll have the basil and kind of pair them together. And then cucumbers will be all the way down. What I do a little different is with these rows, for the first couple feet here, it's lettuce and carrots. And then the next couple feet back, I actually have green beans through the middle and then green beans through the middle here. And then all the way back, there's corn on this side and corn on that side. And that way, instead of just rows straight down of those, um, the corn being in a bunch helps them pollinate each other a lot easier. And then with the way that I do the square foot method and how many things you can put as close as possible together with the green beans, we're gonna do that too. And then leave everything kind of in clusters as opposed to skinny rows. I also do this because um, James Prigioni, who we love to follow, um, he's in a similar zone as us. And also whether he's in a similar zone or not, one thing that he's always said is as far as your walkways, you only need a little bit of walkway. And then as long as you can get down and you can reach at least halfway in to where you're gardening, you can always reach the other half by the other walkway. So previous years, um, I've done something kind of like that, but still not near as wide as these rows are. And I've had a lot more walkways and it, what seemed like a lot more rows, but what it was is I had a lot less that I was actually putting food in and a lot more that I was walking on. So this year we've gotten really, really stingy with our walkways. And as you can see, I can reach about halfway in this way. And then the other half I'll be reaching in from the other walkway. And then the walkways I'm keeping just enough to be walking on. I do use straw and hay from our animal pens. There is a little bit of um, 
like poo and everything from the goats and stuff in them but because I'm not putting it directly onto my plants it's not gonna burn anything out I've never had an issue with it because I do keep it directly on the walkways and I just make sure I'm not putting it right over to the plants I also use um, grass when we start to mow I let the grass dry out and then I rake it up and then I bring that and then not only is that great for walkways but when the plants start to grow up I start to put grass around them kind of as a natural mulch because it's a mulch that is if you do it in nice light layers again you're not going to burn out the plants because it's already dried out anyway and it's not gonna sit there and heat up and decompose um but also it's not a mulch that you have to pick back up it's not a weed cloth that you have to pull up at the end of the year it's not wood chips that's gonna get to be too much that you need to rake up at the end of the year it's something that's just gonna go back into the soil and i can put another layer as needed each time i mow it's also something that I can bring the animals in at the end of the season and still have them go through and munch on the garden and everything that's left without worrying about them eating up a bunch of wood chips or chewing on uh, weed, weed cloth. So that's the garden so far. I will do another video when things start to sprout and kind of show you how much I don't weed things out as far as pruning plants that are really close to each other I let them go and then as they start to get really big that's when I'm more likely to kind of take things out I kind of survival of the fittest in this one that if you can survive being close to each other then that's awesome if not they'll kind of choose which plants gonna go out um, I do that too that way if they're just normal things like heat or wind or anything that takes down a plant I've got plenty more to take its place and I haven't really had too much of an issue with that yet and I plant things really really close together square foot method is like within a square foot with especially like your lettuce you can put like every three or four inches apart um, I've had people come and tell me my tomato plants are too close and it's kind of funny because I do not do them more than like eight inches apart Sometimes people will say like a foot, um, but I keep all mine really close. And then I do do them up on trellises like this. And then I just have them go straight up. And as those start to grow, I will show you the way I prune them. Again, learned the trick from James Prigioni and it has been awesome. I get so many tomatoes. I have so many more plants I can do and I just grow them straight up as opposed to letting them bush out. And that's why I can use the flat panels as opposed to a bunch of the square, um, tomato cages instead or the circle ones or whatever and having the big grown out bushes um i save a lot of space in my garden and then like i said i'm able 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 to do basil right at the feet of them and basil and tomato just like they go good in a dish that you would eat they go good together in planting and that's kind of a good trick if something goes really good when you're cooking and when you're eating usually in the garden they can go near each other too so be sure that when you're putting your garden together you do kind of pay attention to things that can go well together help each other grow aren't going to get in the way of each other and aren't going to do bad but that's how we've set up our garden this time and like i said i've started a lot more is just straight seeds in the garden not only to help the plants kind of grow up a little stronger but to also give me a little more room in my house <laughs> usually i start everything as seeds and i take up the dining room table and half of the classroom that we use and everything is just seeds near every window we have whereas this year i am only going to start tomatoes peppers loofah gourds and maybe my cucumbers. I still might start some of seeds out here and then do some inside to make sure because that's one thing my kids are obsessed with that we have to have in the garden. So stay tuned. I will update you the second I've got something sprouting or the second I have some plants sprouting inside and we'll update you again once I get the rest of it all weeded and pretty and hopefully it goes good. Other years this thing has just exploded and it's like our own little supermarket out here of just awesome superfoods that the kids love to just come out and pick on. And I can't wait to see what it's gonna give us or how much it's gonna give us this year. So stay tuned.